One of the things you'll notice about great golfers is that they have their arms extremely straight through impact and into the follow through. And that's in stark contrast to most high handicap golfers whose arms bend excessively throughout the entire course of the swing, making that contact consistency almost impossible. Today we're going to discuss arms straight in the golf swing, what it means, things you can be doing to actively improve this, and simple drills that you can take to the driving range to improve your ball striking immediately. Most of you are already aware of the concept of keeping the arms straight through the bottom part of the swing here and into the follow through. But the arms straight concept, although it's very relevant, can be slightly misleading in the sense that the arms don't stay completely straight in the backswing and they don't stay completely straight in the follow through either. But the concept of arm straight is developing this arm structure to manage the radius of the golf swing, to manage the swing arc, particularly down at the bottom there through impact. But instead of focusing on the arm straight, I want you to think about this a little bit differently. Take a look at my elbows here at setup and the distance they are apart. The distance the elbows are apart throughout the golf swing should stay fairly stable and constant, meaning that the arms, despite the fact that the trail arm bends in the backswing, the distance between my elbows here has stayed more or less the same as it was at setup. Equally into the downswing, while the right arm straightening, the elbows are still staying close together. Similarly at impact, the arms have a similar distance, the elbows have a similar distance apart, and that would continue into the follow through. So arms straight can also be described as elbows together. And if I had one training aid and one piece of equipment that I would encourage all of you to own, it would be something that you would be able to hold between your arms as you swing in order to manage the elbows and by definition, manage the radius. For the purpose of today's video, I'm gonna be using the Tor Striker Smart Ball, which is designed for this exact job. But you could use any small ball or soft round object that you could place between your arms and hold as you swing. This is a very simple concept, but like so many good training aids, simple often works the best. I place this around my neck and the ball's gonna hang down in front of me. And as I pull my arms and put my hands together as if I'm gonna grip the club, I'm gonna hold this ball somewhere around my elbows or just into my forearms. This gives me a great sense now of, of the structure necessary to control and contain this ball within my arms while squeezing this ball, and that's the key to today, squeezing the ball, putting some pressure between my arms, pushing my elbows together to hold onto this ball. It isn't really enough to just say arms straight and think about pushing your arms away from you. It's more a case of squeezing them closer together so that the distance my elbows are apart at setup can be managed and maintained in the backswing all the way to the top here. And in order to keep hold of this ball, I really gotta feel like my elbows are still squeezing together. If I was to let my swing get excessively long for any reason and my arms started to pull apart, you see the elbows flex and the elbow distance increase. That is a absolute no-no in the golf swing and that's something that so many of you are doing without even realizing it. And once we're up at the top with the elbows squeezing the ball together, we continue to keep squeezing the elbows closer together as we come down. That ensures we can keep hold of this ball while retaining good structure in the arms, structure in the wrists, and the ability to still manage this radius of the swing. Once we've hit, we're gonna keep going and once again, rather than just thinking about pushing the arms away from me, i.e. towards the target, I'm focusing much more on squeezing the elbows together. Let's hit a small one out there to start with, just to give you a sense of what this would look like, okay? It's important to build up slowly using the ball between your arms, keep squeezing it in the backswing and all the way into the follow through. That was a little one, very small, kind of punch swing. Still gone over 100 yards, that was 115 yards. I'm hitting an eight iron here. So that contact was really nice. The, 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 the ability to reach the ground, keeping the arms intact, keeping the structure here, really helped me to make good contact. If you think about the problems that most of you are experiencing when it comes to contact, that topping or thinning the golf ball, it would be because as you're coming through, your elbows are getting further apart. 
you'd certainly drop the ball. And if the elbows are further apart, you can see what that does to the club head. It pulls it away from the ground. And that's why you end up having to stay down for too long and your follow through starts to look more like this with the elbows flexing and the chest staying down. That would be in stark contrast to how the best golfers do it with the arms being squeezed and the shoulders turning and the chest moving up towards the sky. We're gonna add that piece into this discussion shortly, but you wanna start out with the concept of the elbows squeezing together, not just holding the ball and doing nothing with it, actually trying to squeeze it. Almost feel like you're trying to burst the ball between your arms, okay, if you go back, squeezing, 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 come down, keep squeezing, through to the follow through, keep the squeeze the whole time. I mentioned a little earlier that if there was one training aid I'd encourage everyone to have access to, it would be something like this smart ball because the benefits far outweigh just keeping the arms together and keeping the arms straight. It begins to give you a really nice sequence between the body and the arms, how they move together, the connection that you need to experience between the arms, the club and the body. That starts to happen very easily when you have to hold this ball because if this ball wasn't here and it didn't exist, what, mo what many of you choose to do in the takeaway as you move the swing, as you move the club back into the backswing, is you choose to elevate the club by flexing and lifting the arms. There's very little body movement in this initial move. And that's why everything gets out of sequence and you start to see lots of flexed limbs. And equally on the follow through, the same thing would be true. The golfer's more comfortable often just swinging the arms. When you put the ball between the arms, you force the body into moving in a way that's very efficient, very effective. It's how we want things to happen. This connection in the backswing and in the follow through. So even learning to do this without hitting a ball can be hugely beneficial. I'll often start here with new golfers, teaching them how to develop that structure in their arms, learn how to do the follow through piece with the arms together and the body extension. That's an absolute gold mine of, of good information, good benefits in terms of what this little tiny ball between my arms is doing. I'm getting so many pieces for free just by thinking about squeezing my arms together. That one was a little bit faster, a little bit longer swing. I managed to carry 140, 137 through the air. 148 total, not quite full, full distance, but again, the contact was great. It was very, very solid. And I'd argue that most of you out there would really give up a few yards of, of full distance if you were able to improve the consistency and the quality of that ball striking. So if you recognize your ball striking and your direction to be erratic, doing an exercise like I'm about to show you would be the one and only place I would start. This would be your reset drill if you want, your go-to practice when things start to get off track. I've set up the iRange Sports Station again here that I use in my videos and my lessons to help create training stations and environments that golfers need to conform to, to be aware of their spatial surroundings. And in this example, I've got this pole or this rod set up here just to the side of my head on the target side. I'm going to keep hold of this ball, keep squeezing this ball in the backswing, squeezing it in the follow through and moving to a point in the follow through where my shoulders are turned 90 degrees based on this front view camera. And at the same time, my arms and club are parallel to the ground. That's going to be my checkpoint. That's an amazing position for you to learn to get to. Even if you're doing this in just practice swings, training your body and training your arms to maintain the structural radius of the swing, keeping those arms away from you while learning to keep your head steady, demonstrated by all great players. Head's not moving around, head's not moving forwards, head's not moving backwards. We're keeping this head steady. The lower body is moving forwards with the weight. So all of my weight's on my front foot. I can hit balls now, stopping in this 90 degrees turned position with my shoulders. If you can get the shoulders turned to 90 and the arms still straight at this point, you are building in an enormous amount of control and consistency from a contact point of view and an enormous amount of control in the directional sense because maintaining the arm structure 
and swinging around you in this sense like the grid which we have drawn on the ground. This helps to keep the hands and arms moving around you. That builds in directional consistency. There's a, there's a piece there that stops you swinging excessively to the left or the right. So it's one drill, ball between your arms, stopping at 90 in the follow through, building up the speed from slow, medium, and then all the way to as fast as you can go. If you're able to control the ball and stop in this spot, you're building in a ton of benefits to your golf swing. Pretty nice, I did hit it a little bit out the toe. I felt the strike was a little bit off center, so I lost a little bit of speed there, but I was able to demonstrate the stopping piece quite nicely. I managed to keep the ball as well between my arms, and I'm just building up the speed here slowly as we go. Keep squeezing, really squeeze and bend backwards with my chest, chest up to the sky, arms straight. It's a really excellent exercise for you to do at home, in your basement, if you've got a mat and a hitting net, at the driving range. If you're worried about setting up something like this, you don't even have to have this exact station set up. It's just easy to do this if you have the right tools. But if you don't have something like this, you could even practice this at home, just standing inside a door frame with your head just resting to the side of the door frame. You could squeeze the ball, whether real or artificial, you could squeeze your elbows and feel like they stay together and swing through into the follow through where your arms are extended out beyond you, but your head stays back and away from the obstacle, whether it's this rod or like I just mentioned, the door frame. Keep squeezing the arms throughout the swing. For some of you, you'll find the backswing the problem. You'll think that you can't keep the ball between your arms, your elbows will keep flexing. That's a sign that you have to have a different movement in the body to be able to support the hands and arms traveling around you for longer without pulling apart. Most of you will also have problems in the follow through. The chicken wing example would be a good one. This follow through practice will eliminate that chicken wing forever. Improve that ball striking immediately the quality will go up, the consistency will increase, and your ability to play more consistent, enjoyable golf will also get much, much better. So some discussion around arm straight and a slightly different way to think about it. We know arm straight's important, it forms two of the 10 words of the stack and tilt 10 word template. And we notice good golfers keeping their arms straight and bad golfers bending them a lot. But thinking about the elbows and how to squeeze something in between your arms might just give you that way of thinking about this differently. It helps to maintain the structural integrity of the swing by squeezing the arms together throughout the backswing, the downswing and the follow through could really unlock something for you that you've not had before. I've seen this make a huge difference to my students both in person and online when they finally understand that it's a squeezing action, not just a trying to keep my arm straight action. I'll also leave some links in the description for the other items used in today's video. The T-Claw is which I use to build the grid on the mat and the iRange Sports Station which has multiple functions, not just building out good training stations but also helping you to be able to film your swing very effectively and efficiently when you're out at the range or on the golf course. As I say, those links are down in the description and there's discount codes included as well. And lastly from me before I go today, if you're interested in taking any online lessons, I'll leave the link to my Skillist profile in the description as well. Go and check it out. Got lots of people taking advantage of getting their game in shape before the season starts. If you'd like to be one of those people benefiting from online lessons directly with me, go and check out the profile. I look forward to working with you. In today's video, I mentioned how important it was to not only keep squeezing the arms and keep them straight, but how to finish with your body in the correct position. If you'd like to have a little bit more detail around that, I made this video right here about how to learn the follow through pieces. Start with the finish, I often say. And if you're ready to learn that lesson, then go ahead and click and watch now.